Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I will show you some points why the Sony a7 II is still the best entry level full frame camera in this year and why it's not the Sony a7 III. In the next few minutes I will also show you some photos that I took with the a7 II so you can convince yourself of the image quality. When the a7 II was released in late 2014 it was priced at 2100 euro and it was one of the best mirrorless cameras you could buy in that time. Many things have been improved over the first a7 the best improvement however was a new sensor stabilization which can be found in the a7 cameras today. The body has a timeless design and it still looks like a modern camera after almost 10 years. Another improvement can be found in the video function. In addition to the new codecs, picture profiles such as Log2 or Cine1 were added which is a great advantage in post-processing. Unfortunately the videos are also limited to full HD 60 FPS. But the image quality is still great as you can see here. Here. But why should a beginner buy the a7 II rather than the a7 III? There are a few reasons for this. First is the picture quality. Both cameras use the same 24 megapixel sensor and the resolution is therefore identical. The a7 III does have a higher ISO range, but you will hardly notice a difference up to ISO 12000. Believe me, I own both cameras and you don't notice any difference. Of course, when it comes to autofocus, the a7 III is also better. It has 600 and the a7 II has 150 focus points. But that doesn't mean that the a7 II doesn't have a good autofocus. As you can see here, I test the autofocus under difficult lighting conditions with an aperture of only f4 and it reacts really quickly. When you are photographing outdoor during the day, there was almost no difference in speed of the autofocus. Another advantage the a7 III has over the a7 II is a larger battery. With one charge, you can make 610 shots. With the a7 II only 350 shots. But the battery of the a7 II are also smaller and cheaper. Due to the smaller battery, the a7 II is also 50 grams lighter than the a7 III. That doesn't sound like much, but you notice it clearly in your hand. The a7 II looks much more compact than the a7 III due to its lower weight. The next big advantage of the a7 III is a video function. The a7 III can already film in 4K and the a7 II only in Full HD, but you also have to pay dearly for this whereby we have already arrived to my next point, the price. If you are a beginner, you probably won't want to buy a very expensive camera right away since you want to try it first out. The a7 III still costs around 1300 euro used. You can get a used a7 II for around 500 euro. This means a difference of 800 euro. It is better to invest this money in good lenses. You can even buy up to two lenses for this money on the used market. For example, the Sigma 28-70 f2.8, which I can't really recommend, or the Sony 24-105mm f4, or the Sony Zeiss lens 24-70mm f4. But you can also take good pictures with the kit lenses, like the 28-70 or the 28-60mm. Don't get me wrong, if you have the money for the a7 III, you should buy it. It's a fantastic camera, but if you want to try it your hand first at full frame photography and you are only interested in photos, the a7 II is a very good choice and for me the best value for money. As you could already see, the a7 II also takes very good images. I hope I was able to help you a little bit with your decision. If you like this test, I would appreciate if you can leave a like and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, please write them in the comments down below. I will try to answer everyone. See you next time.